All right, hello, Honors 100. Hope everyone had a great weekend. To start today's class, just wanted to offer a reminder. Um, the Creative Nonfiction Assignment is due a week from today, uh, Monday, November 23rd. Um, please keep an eye on that deadline. Um, and this assignment, my intention is for it to be one that in many ways is fun um, and, and relatively enjoyable because you can kind of make it your own um, and write about something either personal or something that you're personally interested in um, as opposed to um, you know, making an argumentative essay or things like that. So some of which you know could have been what you're interested in as well. But um, this is really meant to be um, sort of something that allows you to kind of reflect and or research something you're interested in um, and just kind of give us, you know, essentially a, a nonfiction story kind of, kind of related to all that. Um, format is flexible. Um, you, you know, all, all the guidelines I laid out last time that are in the assignment prompt. Um, the other piece I wanted to reinforce today was just a reminder of um, that for this assignment, um, you can send me the separate uh, page or so of content that you're willing to share with class. Um, if you do that, again, three points will automatically get added to the top of your score for this assignment. Um, to be really transparent, I've never had a student um, share their work and not get an A on this assignment, um, just based on um, if you did, you know, even what work that would get you. Um, you know, a score that was in the C range, if you get three points added to your score out of 20, um, you'll, you'll probably still end up in the A range, right? So I think it's a really good way just to shore up um, at the end of the semester that you're earning um, you as much credit as you can for this last assignment. Um, so, so I hope some of you will take advantage of that. Um, for our last um, two classes, my intention is to focus on work that students have shared um, to you know, put forth the class for us to discuss. Um, if we don't have very many volunteers, I, I may sub in some other material for us to read during the class time. Um, if we get a lot of submissions, I might use our last three classes for this purpose. Um, so in any event, again, just remember you can uh, email or message me separately to share the page that you would like to share for that purpose. Um, I think it's a really good opportunity to, you know, get that extra credit, um, but also just to, um, you know, end the class in a way where we're kind of interacting with each other and getting to share work that I think you all should be pretty proud of. So uh, look forward to that. Please feel free to contact me with uh, individual questions about what you're thinking of working on. Uh, I've heard from a, a small handful of you already uh, of things that you're thinking about, um, and I'm really encouraged. It sounds like really cool stuff that we're uh, coming up with, so um, yeah, I'm optimistic this will be a great way to end the semester. Um, but okay, so, so to switch gears here, uh, we'll look at the, the Walters essay. Um, so this reading, um, I would also put in the vein of creative nonfiction. Um, the Verity sales piece we looked at um, as, together as a class uh, the previous time, that, that's obviously an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, the Tanahasi Coates reading that we did before that uh, would be another example of creative nonfiction. And, we, and we've seen a number of examples of things like that over the course of this semester. So feel free to look back through the syllabus. Um, if you're feeling a little bit stumped about what you might want to do or what format you might want to use, um, these are all kinds of you know, different examples of things you could use. Um, the reading for next time, just to kind of jump a little ahead and kind of preview, uh, is fictional. It's a short story. But in many ways, I would suggest operates um, sort of similar to how a, an essay could operate. Um, it's got some more magical kind of elements. Um, arguably, you can, you can debate whether the elements in our next reading are um, truly there and kind of magical or more elements of the imagination. But regardless, um, the mode of storytelling it takes on is something that I think you could reflect for your own nonfiction as well. Um, but okay, so so for today, I'm going to post um, this video. Um, you don't need to watch the full thing necessarily. Um, it's just footage of Hurricane Sandy. Um, the reason I'm sharing it is because Hurricane Sandy is kind of a backdrop for the Walters essay. Um, and it occurred to me that um, at this point, it's enough years ago and it's far enough removed from Nevada um, that a number of you might not really be familiar with this hurricane or, or what it did at the time. So I think it's useful context. Just take a look at that. Um, especially if you've never been in a community where you've experienced a hurricane or never followed kind of the news around hurricanes before, uh, just to get some sense of kind of the, the general, you know, kind of carnage, kind of chaos that the, these situations can cause. Um, so, so some pieces of, of this uh, essay I wanted to look at, though. Um, one is the collage style of it, by which I mean uh, we get these fragments of, of different pieces of the narrative, um, of the story that Walters is telling, um, of kind of more historical sort of information, of information about weather, um, all of which I would suggest kind of adds up to a whole, right? Uh, we talk about the gestalt of something, that it's the idea that the sum is greater than, the, or the, the whole, excuse me, is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, so we have all these individual pieces that might not seem to fit together, 
together at first blush, but when we kind of study what they do in interaction with each other, um, yield something interesting. I think that's a big part uh, of what Walters is getting at, is kind of driving home, um, again, the sort of chaotic nature of, of the scene that she's depicting, um, and how all these different parts of a life can kind of intersect with each other. Um, but let's see, and then, um, okay, so to, to go to an, another key piece of this thing to me that's of interest, because I'm going to actually leave this one relatively open-ended just because I think it's the kind of essay that invites uh, the reader to go to what they're most drawn to, what they're most interested in. So please feel free to bring in other elements. Um, but one of the things that I find most interesting, and I think is kind of an undercurrent in this essay, um, is this idea of sort of the changing or conflicting different meanings of words. Um, and, and I think that the, the Walter's choice to kind of explore this theme, um, again, speaks to the sense of disorientation, the sense that everything is changing and results of the, the disaster that she's depicting in the essay. Um, but for example, there's the word ship, uh, that first comes up in 191, um, and she discusses a little bit, you know, different meanings of it. Um, but you know, there's a boat that, that is a ship. There is to ship something, the verb that we, you know, send something, um, across a ways, um, you know, there's, there's different, uh, again, th there's the boat, but there's also, um, you know, for those who are, uh, you know, into kind of, you know, space travel, especially science fiction kind of narratives, there are spaceships. Um, there, there's the trope in, um, especially people who look at, you know, fan fiction or, um, you know, participate in online communities, um, about shows that they like of shipping people. Um, so, so all these different meanings of this word can kind of intersect with each other. Um, and I really, there's another one here of um, the term skyscraper, which comes up on 184, um, where what Walters kind of discusses the origins of it, that, you know, it was kind of um, taken on by um, the land and sort of by our, our mass culture as being just those really tall buildings. But the original meaning of it being it being part of a ship that, that reached so high um, that it appeared to scrape the sky, right, which I, I think is really interesting. Um, and I would suggest that there's an undercurrent here um, of sort of um, this idea of, you know, justice for different kinds of people, of racial justice even, um, and the idea that um, the land sort of appropriated this term from the sea, right? What, what water might represent here, I, I think, is pretty interesting. Um, and on that topic of water, there, there's the idea, um, which she brings up on 181 to 182, of uh, the sea as message versus messenger. So, like, it itself being the information that's being conveyed versus it being the medium through which something is conveyed. Um, and on page 187, it gets into potential conflicting symbolic meanings uh, of water when we get into that, which I, I think is pretty interesting. Um there's a reference to the Statue of Liberty on page 187 um, that I, I find fascinating. It's probably my personal favorite part um, of the essay where it talks about the Statue of Liberty looking outward towards the sea for help, um, which I think is pretty directly in conflict with the kind of default um, meaning of the Statue of Liberty that people tend to think of, um, you know, it being a symbol of kind of, you know, the United States and of kind of welcoming people in. So that's usually, you know, if people were, were sailing across the sea and into New York that, that'd be one of the first things they would see is this, this statue as this symbol of, you know, freedom and kind of welcome. Um, and the idea that it's facing outward um, not to welcome people, but rather it's looking for help for people, right, uh, I, I think is a, a fascinating turn on this thing. And obviously not the original intention of the statue, at least I, I don't think so. If someone wanted to argue that from a historical perspective, we, we could perhaps get into that. Um, but I think interesting what Walters is using uh, that symbol to kind of communicate in this case. Um, on 188, we get into the landfill, and this is less a matter of kind of the, the changing meaning of a word, but more um, the idea that this landfill is where um, something that's, that they find something that's been thrown away that is actually a treasure, right? Which is kind of the opposite of what we think of a landfill as being a place for trash, things that we, we would cast off. Um, on page 193, there's this idea of New York as a concept rather than a fixed place, which I think to some degree kind of intersects with our discussion of Baltimore from, from the Coates reading uh, that we looked at previously. Uh, I'm interested in, in what people think of um, New York as a concept, as depicted again, is on page 193 here. Um, so so that, that's the, the bulk of what I want to go over fr from the Walters essay. Again, it's, um, to me, a, a really interesting essay in part because of 
the variety of different levels it operates on and kind of weaves in and out of, you know, di different kinds of communication and different information that it's sharing. Um, and again, I think it could be a useful example, just again, if you're thinking of how to convey a story, um, sometimes a less linear approach to things like this um, can actually be more effective just for kind of the way that it invites the reader in to kind of latch on to the specific pieces they're interested in um, and the way that it can make connections for a reader that might not seem kind of objectively to be linked to each other, um, but speak to the writer behind it, um, that maybe speak that specific time. Uh, so so I, I think it's, you know, worth us considering. So uh, I'm going to keep this video lecture pretty short. A few of them have been pretty long lately, so I'm, I'm mindful of that. Um, so uh, I'm going to cut it off here. Um, so please, by all means, feel free to bring in other parts of the reading, bring in other, um, you know, words or, or ideas that seem to have multiple meanings in the reading as I was just talking about. Um, discuss your reactions to this, again, collage style, or sort of a fragmented narrative bringing different pieces. Um, any of that's fair game for, for our discussion. Um, and then as, as one final file note, I, I meant to mention this at the beginning, but I overlooked my note of it earlier. Um, I'll just make a quick mention uh, for the research argument essays. I am caught up on grading those. Um, so, so please do uh, make sure you're reading the feedback that goes along with them. Again, for pretty much every assignment, I give you some feedback uh, with the exception of the reading response journals. In most of those cases, I don't. But uh, for most of the other you know, significant assignments, um, you have a couple paragraphs of feedback, at least from me. Um, you know, reading that, um, a, a it's, it's rationale for, you know, the score you received. Um, most of you did really well on this assignment. So just to kind of, you know, pat yourself on the back and see what worked. Um, B, because even for ones that were really successful, um, but especially those that I felt were less successful, I do give a fair amount of feedback to, you know, not only justify the score, but also just kind of to point you in a, in a better direction for future assignments. Um, and all the more practically speaking, as a reminder, you do have the opportunity to resubmit a revision of this assignment. It's due on um, that final, uh, I think it's that final, Monday of class. Let me see if I have the syllabus open here. Um, oh, so it's the final Wednesday of, of class. Yeah, the, the December 2nd, um, that there's an optional revision due uh, of the research argument essay. Um, basically, what, what I'll do usually is take the average of what I would give you for the revision and what your original score was and give you the, the average of that for your final grade for that assignment if you choose to revise it. Um, so if you already had an A-level score, um, probably not worth your time and effort at this point in the semester to do that, although you certainly could, because again, I think every essay has room to, you know, develop further and improve. Um, but if you had a, a relatively weak score, one you weren't happy with, um, this is a good opportunity just to kind of make up that credit, right? Just by kind of taking my feedback into consideration, um, ask me questions if you're not clear on what I was saying, um, and give the opportunity to resubmit it, and I'll average the scores and often kind of round up a little bit if I see you put a clear effort in to, you know, meaningfully revise uh, what you had turned in. Um, it is optional, so you don't, you don't have to do it. Um, I know everyone has different bars for, you know, what they consider a satisfactory score, and everyone has different priorities and how busy they are at any given time, so it might not make sense for you. Uh, I don't hold it against anyone. One. Again, it's just an opportunity to potentially improve um, your standing in the class. Um, you have an opportunity to revise that assignment. You also have an opportunity to revise um, the creative nonfiction.